Hello, and thank you for listening. This is Eileen Jacobs, and today I'll be reading to you the article titled Discovering Grace Weekly, number seven. Let's get started. Romans 12, verse 21, in the Contemporary English Version. Don't let evil defeat you, but defeat evil with good. Dear friends, we are back teaching our series focusing on all that is good. With all of the deception, darkness, and evil hypocrisy surrounding us currently, we will all need to redirect our attention to that which is honest, right, and overflowing with integrity, and start by making good a priority in our homes, schools, workplaces, the marketplace, with our neighbors, in our places of leadership, and every place that we find ourselves socially. Let's begin a grassroots movement for goodness everywhere. This will be our third article concerning the exhortation in Romans chapter 12, verse 21. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. I love this version of the verse from the contemporary English version. Don't let evil defeat you, but defeat evil with good. This is such a powerful verse in scripture, and we have discussed the reality that without the nature of God living on the inside of us, this directive is impossible. However, if we do possess God's good nature, this directive is absolutely possible and totally natural. In our first article in this series, we covered the first part of this command, do not be overcome by evil. See the Discovering Grace Weekly number five. We learned that there was only one man who was able to not be overcome by evil, and that was Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The only way we are truly able to not be overcome by evil is to believe in him through faith in his finished work on the cross, and to trust him when he said that he has overcome the world for us. John 16, verse 33, in the Amplified Classic Version. I have told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace and confidence. In the world you have tribulation and trials and distress and frustration. But be of good cheer, take courage, be confident, certain, undaunted. For I have overcome the world. I have deprived it of power to harm you and have conquered it for you. It is through our faith in Jesus Christ that we also overcome the world and all of the evil in it. First John Chapter 5, verse 4 in the New American Standard Bible says, For whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. In the second article in this series, see Discovering Grace Weekly number 6, we explored the story of the rich young ruler to help us understand how the second half of Romans twelve twenty one is accomplished. We are unable to overcome evil with good without the character and nature of God living within us, because only God is good. Mark chapter 10, verse 18 in the Amplified Version. Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is essentially good by nature except God alone. Both of these previous articles were so powerful. If you didn't get a chance to read them, I hope you will afford yourself the time to really let the precious truths of scripture sink in. This week, my intention was to take us back to the context of Romans 12, 21, but I felt really impressed to continue for one more article on the boundless goodness of God. There are so many in our world today that have developed a poor opinion of God that is not based in a thorough understanding of his true nature and character, as is revealed in the whole counsel of his word. Friends, 
I hope it is truly your desire to know him. That is his desire for you. Check this out. In Jeremiah chapter 9, verses 23 through 24 in the Amplified Classic Version. Thus says the Lord, Let not the wise and skillful person glory and boast in his wisdom and skill. Let not the mighty and powerful person glory and boast in his strength and power. Let not the person who is rich in physical gratification and earthly wealth glory and boast in his temporal satisfactions and earthly riches. But let him who glories glory in this, that he understands and knows me personally and practically, directly discerning and recognizing my character, that I am the Lord who practices loving kindness, judgment and righteousness in the earth. For in these things, I delight, says the Lord. Father God really does want you to know him fully and his true nature of goodness towards you. He is the Lord who practices loving kindness, judgment and righteousness in the earth. Our God desires what is right and just for us because it is good for us. He practices loving kindness towards us and desires that we know his true nature. When Jesus's work on earth was nearly done, just before he went to the cross to be our substitute in receiving all of the curses and punishment for sin committed against all of God's broken laws, he prayed this final prayer to the father. Listen to the heart of Jesus as he tells the father of his desire to give eternal life to those who would believe in him. Notice what his definition of eternal life actually is. John chapter 17 verses 1 through 3 in the Amplified Classic Version. When Jesus had spoken these things, he lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify and exalt and honor and magnify your son so that your son may glorify and extol and honor and magnify you. Just as you have granted him power and authority over all flesh, all humankind now glorify him so that he may give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life. It means to know, to perceive, recognize, become acquainted with and understand you, the only true and real God, and likewise to know him, Jesus, as the Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah, whom you have sent. This is the heart essence of perfect loving relationship. There has never been and never will be any greater act of love and kindness than the substitutionary work of Jesus on the cross to deliver us from sin and shame. The Lord and creator of all the earth and everything in it wants us to have an eternal relationship with him where we know him and his son completely and have full confidence in his nature of trustworthiness, goodness, and love towards us. This is that perfect relationship and loving fellowship that every heart on earth truly desires and longs for. We mistakenly assume that we can find this perfect, unbroken relationship based in trust and love in other human beings, but we always come up short and disappointed because this perfect relationship can only be enjoyed in fellowship with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit of God. It is only after we learn to enjoy perfect fellowship in relationship with God that we become just like him, the perfect lover, friend, or family member. We are promised in the word of God that God will give this eternal life 
this perfect fellowship and relationship and the ability to know him to anyone who will believe in his son and the work he did on the cross in bearing the penalty for our sin. See it for yourself in John chapter three, verses 14 through 18 in the Amplified Version. Just as Moses lifted up the bronze serpent in the desert on a pole, so must the Son of Man be lifted up on the cross, so that whoever believes will in him have eternal life after physical death and will actually live forever. For God so greatly loved and dearly prized the world that he even gave his one and only begotten Son, so that whoever believes and trusts in him as Savior shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send the Son into the world to judge and condemn the world, that is, to initiate the final judgment of the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes and has decided to trust in him as personal Savior and Lord is not judged. For this one, there is no judgment, no rejection, no condemnation. But the one who does not believe and has decided to reject him as personal Savior and Lord is judged already. That one has been convicted and sentenced because he has not believed and trusted in the name of the one and only Son of God, the one who is truly unique, the only one of his kind, the one who alone can save him. Friend, if you are reading this today and you have never taken the time to consider beginning an eternal relationship with the Lord through faith in the Son, Jesus Christ, I pray you will consider the verse above and start believing just how much God loves and deeply desires to have a loving, faith-filled relationship with you. He wants you to know him fully and trust him for this eternal relationship that he has made so easily available through the forgiveness of your sins by the cross of Jesus Christ and your simple faith in that act of redemption. Oh, I really encourage you to start this relationship today. It is very simple. Just look up to heaven and tell the Lord that you believe and receive his son's salvation. That is all that is required. However, the alternative is to become accountable to your own sins and never experience the relationship with God that you were created for. This is not about joining a religion. It is about entering into an eternal relationship with the God who loves you dearly. Here are a few other articles that will help you on this journey. Get saved now, ask questions later, and all who are weary. For those of you who have already begun an eternal, loving, faith-filled relationship with God, it is important that we are ever growing in our knowledge of him and his son through his word. This is how we participate in this loving, faith-filled relationship he wants to share with us. It is also how we become partakers of his divine nature that he has already placed inside of us through the Holy Spirit of Christ in our new birth. See 2 Peter chapter 1. It is good for us to be reminded of just how good God is because it will cause us to see just how good he wants to be through us to the rest of the world, which he also died to save. Let's dive into some scripture about God's goodness. I think one of the most important qualities that we must come to believe about God is that in him, there is no darkness at all. First John chapter one, Verse 5 in the Amplified Version. This is the message of God's promised revelation, which we have heard from him and now announce to you that God is light. He is holy. His message is truthful. He is perfect in righteousness. And in him, 
there is no darkness at all, no sin, no wickedness, no imperfection. This promise of God's character is so important for us to understand. It will always serve as an anchor for our lives and will help us discern the things we view around us and better interpret the things that people try to tell us. Any word or circumstance can easily be exposed as to its source. Is it light or is it darkness? If it is evil, dark, painful, hurtful, or harmful, it is not of God. However, if it is good, perfect, hopeful, truthful, helpful, healing, filled with integrity and love and generosity, and is verified by the revelation of God's word, then it is of God. This really simplifies life and helps us to define what is good and what is not. This scripture gives us the assurance. James chapter one, verse 17 in the Amplified Version. Every good thing given and every perfect gift is from above. It comes down from the father of lights, the creator and sustainer of the heavens, in whom there is no variation, no rising or setting, or shadow cast by his turning, for he is perfect and never changes. We've already learned that only God is truly good. His nature is truly good and there is no evil in him. His desire for us is to have good and perfect gifts coming down from him. God is the source of light and life, but not darkness. Let's be certain that we are clear about this And be very careful and cautious of those who call evil good and good evil. We are beginning to hear more and more of this kind of talk coming from certain sectors of people. But be warned, for they are confused and deceived. Do not be tempted to join those ranks. For God had pronounced a woe on those who do this. A woe is like a certain judgment or condemnation of imminent doom and destruction. Let's just conclude that this is not good for anyone for sure. Isaiah chapter 5 verse 20 in the New American Standard Bible. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who substitute darkness for light and light for darkness who substitute bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Friends, most of us are aware that we have landed in a time where people have set aside moral absolutes and have flipped normal good standards upside down. They call truth a lie or a conspiracy theory. They call honest, concerned citizens domestic terrorists. They call the dangerous and destructive, peaceful. They call for unity, but only if it serves their divisive agenda. There are those who pose as pious, religious churchgoers, but advocate as good what God has revealed as evil in his own word. We dare not redefine God's revelation of himself or what he defines as good. Do you know what God has revealed as good? Determine to read and study his word and he will make all things clear. Let's visit for a moment the law of God. When God gave the law, otherwise known as the Ten Commandments, to show mankind his perfect standard, It was not only to demonstrate to us just how far mankind would miss the mark because of the sin nature resident in our being, but to give a clear picture of what righteousness looks like and what it does not look like. You see, when the law said that you shall not give false testimony against your neighbor in Exodus 20 verse 16, it was to announce to us 
that our holy God is not a liar. He is a truth teller. The master of all lies is the devil and all subsequent lies are birthed of him. See John chapter eight, verse 44. On the contrary, God, the father's character is perfect in truth. In attempting to achieve his perfect standard with our own performance, we would come to quickly learn that without his nature resident within us, we would never arrive at his perfection. It was never God's intention that his original creation would be anything less than a perfect representation of his own nature and image. But when sin entered, God's perfect creation was spoiled. When the law said, you shall not steal, Exodus 20, verse 15, it was to reveal to us that our God is not a thief. He is a giver, not a taker. This is the dream he had for his creation, that we would be givers just like him. We would be truth tellers just like him. We would be lovers just like him. Through the forgiveness of sin, because of the cross of Christ, God has restored to those who have believed in his son, this perfect nature of his. He has recreated us with his generous, honest, loving nature so that we are able and empowered to overcome evil with good. As we continue to explore God's perfect will for us in Romans 12:21, that we not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. It is so important for us to be reminded about the true nature of God and what he defines as good. There are many in our world today who are trying to redefine what good is, but we must, and I really mean that we must know the difference. Galatians chapter 5 verse 19 through 21 in the Amplified Version. Now the practices of the sinful nature are clearly evident. They are sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, which is total irresponsibility and lack of self-control, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, strife, jealousy, Fits of anger, disputes, dissensions, factions that promote heresies, envy, drunkenness, riotous behavior, and other things like these. I warn you beforehand, just as I did previously, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. This is a pretty clear list of what God considers evil. This is very serious with God, and he emphatically declares that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Here is another such list of those who will not have any share in the kingdom of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 and 10 in the Amplified Version. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit or have any share in the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate by perversion, nor those who participate in homosexuality, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revilers whose words are used as weapons to abuse, insult, humiliate, intimidate, or slander, nor swindlers will inherit or have any share in the kingdom of God. If we are going to truly not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good, then we need to be honest with the word of God. We cannot call what God calls evil good. 
We are not going to be able to help anyone come to the knowledge of the truth if we are not honest and consistent with the scripture. Notice how God describes the kingdom of heaven. Revelations 21 verses 22 through 27 in the Amplified Version. I saw no temple in it. For the Lord God Almighty, the Omnipotent, the ruler of all, and the Lamb are its temple. And the city has no need of the sun, nor of the moon to give light to it. For the glory, splendor, and radiance of God has illumined it, and the Lamb is its lamp and light. The nations, the redeemed people of the earth, will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring into it their glory. By day, for there will be no night there, its gates will never be closed in fear of evil. And they will bring the glory, splendor, and majesty, and the honor of the nations into it. And nothing that defiles or profanes or is unwashed will ever enter it, nor anyone who practices abominations, detestable, morally repugnant things, and lying, but only those will be admitted whose names have been written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Friend, if you have found yourself described negatively in any of these above scriptures, I implore you to consider the goodness of God. He is reconciling you to himself and will not hold your sins against you if you turn to him and accept his son as your savior from all of these things. I encourage you to go back and read the upper portion of this article again, or visit one of the articles, Get Saved Now, Ask Questions Later, or All Who Are Weary to help you begin this loving, faith-filled relationship with God. God gave up his own son as a sacrifice for your sins, so you could have a share in his kingdom and be in right relationship with him forever. If these above scriptures described you once upon a time, or if you as a redeemed believer have been tempted to slip back into the fleshly desires, be reminded of this scripture that follows 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verses 9 and 10. That would be 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 11 in the Amplified Version. And such were some of you before you believed. But you were washed by the atoning sacrifice of Christ. You were sanctified, set apart for God and made holy. You were justified, declared free of guilt in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and in the Holy Spirit of our God, the source of the believer's new life and changed behavior. In order for us to overcome evil with good, which has been the goal of our instruction for this series on good. We must come to understand our God and his definition of good. We must see him as the source of all that is good and rely on his goodness working in and through us to reach those who need a healthy vaccination of the goodness of God. If we are going to truly help others, We have to understand righteousness and be able to distinguish the difference between what God calls good and what he calls evil. We must walk in his light in order to shine it upon the darkness and overcome it. I would like to conclude this article with these tremendous promises of God for those who would taste and see that the Lord is good. Enjoy. Psalm 34, verses 7 through 22 in the Amplified Version. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him with awe inspired reverence and worship him with obedience, and he rescues each of them. Taste and see that the Lord our God is good. How blessed! 
fortunate, prosperous, and favored by God is the man who takes refuge in him. Oh, reverently fear the Lord, you his saints, believers, holy ones. For to those who fear him, there is no want. The young lions lack food and grow hungry, but they who seek the Lord will not lack any good thing. Come, you children, and listen to me. I will teach you to fear the Lord with awe-inspired reverence and worship him with obedience. Who is the one who desires life and loves many days that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Turn away from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are towards the righteous, those with moral courage and spiritual integrity, and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil to cut off the memory of them from the earth. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and rescues them from all their distress and troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted, and he saves those who are crushed in spirit, contrite in heart, truly sorry for their sin. Many hardships and perplexing circumstances confront the righteous, but the Lord rescues him from all of them. He keeps all his bones, not one of them is broken. Evil will cause the death of the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be held guilty and will be condemned. The Lord redeems the soul of his servants, and none of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. Now that, dear friends, is grace. Again, this is Eileen Jacobs, and you have been listening to the audio article entitled Discovering Grace Weekly, number seven. We strongly believe in the exhortation given to us in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5. The goal of our instruction is love from a pure heart and a good conscience and a sincere faith. It's our desire that you be encouraged and built up in your understanding of the word of God and are strengthened in your relationship with him. We want to thank you so much for listening. We hope you will join us again for other future articles and teaching. We love you and bless you with all the blessings of the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ.